Hey everybody, welcome back to Link's Cast. I'm your host Matt. And I'm Tyler. He remembers his name even though he hasn't slept in like 36 hours. It's great. Yep. So well, I don't know about that long. But. It's been a while. That's what you said. It's, that's, I could have went you know, for a higher number to yeah. make it seem more impressive. <laughs> I, just, I just don't want people to think I'm dying over here. It's only been like 24 hours. It's fine. It's like it's okay. He's sort of. He's just gonna start talking about NFTs again. We had to put a stop to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, so this is the Linux Cast. We talk about Linux things. We are a day late, so uh, we do apologize for that. That's my fault this time. Uh, so surprisingly, this week has just been the absolute worst week when it comes to work. So we had four guys quit at work. So I had to go. So I'm not like I'm not a writer anymore at, at where I work, right? I still write a little bit, just but it's just mostly for fun and keep my toes in the water, as they say. So, but most of the time I'm just an editor. But we had four guys quit, so I had to take their assignments and do all those. So it has been just a monstrous week. Um, and on top of that, I hurt my knee, so I haven't been walking around all that much. So it's just been a kind of a crappy week for me. Uh, but. We're not here to talk about my woes. Um, Tyler, I'm not even going to ask you what you've done in Linux this week because we all know the answer to that question is that you haven't done shit in Linux this week because you're not a Linux user anymore. You're a Windows user. I'm, you're fired, dude. Seriously, what the hell? Like, one week I could put up with it. Two weeks, so it, it was still, you know, fine, whatever. You had a good reason. But we're like three or four weeks in and it's still like you're you're still in bed with bill gates i mean really mm -hmm. what is wrong with you oh, uh, i'm just nervous because i don't want to spend so much i don't want to go over and spend 30 minutes setting shit up and then finding out that the desktop environment that i'm using like i have to like install some stupid thing and mess around with another stupid thing to get my freaking windows to go to half my vertical widescreen like i just don't have to mess with any of that stuff all i heard so, was blah 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 I, i'm lazy blah 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 exactly <laughs> that's that's in all reality that's all it is i'm lazy and and that's it so i'm fine with microsoft spying on me egregiously for the moment um i i am you know i'm not mad I'm just severely disappointed. Also really mad. But <laughs> I, I think it's a little bit of Stockholm syndrome too. It's like it's kinda like where, you know, your bully like beats you up and takes your lunch money. Like for so like but the, here's the thing, like when he does beat you up and he takes your lunch money, like so, like some other kid, like some good Samaritan every single day buys you a really nice pizza. So you're like, uh, I mean it's kind of easy. I mean I, know. I could run and everything, but then again I could just Get beat up and grab my nice pizza. It's... Carlos gave me a really good idea. You're not actually in bed with Bill Gates. You're actually his illegitimate son. <laughs> uh, well, well, look, my 23 and me is not public. Okay, and <laughs> I, uh, we, we need to get um, Tyler's mom on here and just ask some really pointed questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just, I'm just saying. Look, I, you just open up my closet and it's full of khakis and sweaters. <laughs> you have some pocket protectors in there and some really weird glasses because the glasses you have just don't go with your Bill Gates, you know, repertoire. Hey, well, I mean, if we're being honest, these are my backup glasses because my other one gets, my other ones did get broke, so or lost. Yeah, I don't want to talk about uncomfortable glasses. That's just that just leads into a, a rabbit hole. So, uh, I think so you haven't done anything in Linux. <laughs> like we're 6 minutes in. <laughs> we still haven't talked about anything yet. <laughs> this is going to be a ridiculous podcast by the way. So if you are listening to this right now, pull over in your car and find something else to listen to. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you're not in this for the biggest rambles and tangents you've ever seen in your life, you probably won't enjoy this podcast because we will eventually get to the main topic. Um, whatever but that it will take topic, time. But it, we'll we, stumble there. We, we'll get there because yeah. he's sleep deprived. I don't know what I am, but <laughs> something <laughs> along the line of that. All right, so Tyler, what have you been doing this week? Uh, just working a lot on the game. Um, I've gotten a lot of progress done. Uh, I am, I'm, I'm really excited about a lot of the progress that I've made. Uh, We've got like a really nice logo for it uh, whipped up. Got, um, uh, I mean, I showed you some of the stuff in there. We, we've got some 
pretty decent foliage. Um, we've got pistols uh, and or a, a pistol, a rifle with aiming animations, crouching, jumping. Um, you can switch your weapons. We've got fire mode switching, and uh, we're on the way to to getting a good foundation for a, a single player survival game. And yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about it. But. That- I, from what I've seen of it, not granted, it was only what you just showed me today. It looks really cool. And um, I'm not just saying that because I have no talent in that area whatsoever. So literally stick figures would have looked awesome. <laughs> so um, you're, you, when you're asking for a critic, I'm not the best critic you could have. Uh, but it looked really cool. So I'm, I'm happy that you found that to do. Uh, I couldn't do that <laughs> like I have, I have i have no talent in that area whatsoever my my graphical designs chops are not existent at all <laughs> <laughs> like they're really not <clears throat> excuse me um now what about you so what have you been up to so in 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 the then the docs i say i've been talking about uh, how I've been finishing up my MX Linux review, which is true. I'm going to rec- hopefully record that today, maybe tomorrow. And also working on the website, but that last part is not true. Um, <laughs> um, uh, I thought when I wrote that that I was actually going to go through and work on the website, but I did not do any more of that. The server is still in the exact same position it was last week when we talked. So it's just been a, a really, really long week. Um, I have been thinking about switching to a different window manager. I've been thinking about going back to i3 for a while. Just for fun. Uh, a change of sh- scenery. But that hasn't happened yet either. So, like, I have all these plans, but I have just had no time to do any of those things. But, I don't know. It's been it's a long week. I'm happy that it's Friday. I'm, like, I'm really, really happy that it's Friday. No. Yep. Like really happy, like I, I, I like like so much so much happy that I can't even properly expect es- express how happy that I am that it's Friday. Um, but anyways, um, uh, just let me talk a little bit talk about MX Linux just for a minute. I really like it, man. Like I'm seriously considering making MX my daily driver. That's how good it is. Uh, oh, now, wow. uh, now I'm recording it, recording this on Arco. Not because MX is bad, but simply because I have all my OBS profiles here on Arco, so I don't want to have to go through and set all that stuff up. That's not an, that's not an MX Linux problem. That's a, a OBS is shit problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's just like, it's it can't it's really good most of the time. It's shit the other ten percent. Uh, so that's the reason why I'm on Arco today. But I've been using MX Linux basically as my daily driver now for almost a month, and it is good. The problem, like I talked about last time, is that uh, if you use it with their intended purposes, which is non-system D, you have some issues because a lot of programs are written for system D and those programs just don't work, right? So, yep. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing on Linux. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what my next long-term review is going to be. I'm thinking it's going to be like Endeavor OS or something. Uh, because people keep telling me, like, oh, Endeavor OS is the best Arch-based distro, and why are you always poo-pooing it? So I've never actually tried it long-term. I've tried Garuda long-term was meh on that. So we'll see. Maybe that's the next one I, tr- I try. Um, I've also been... Uh, people have been talking to me about, like, a, a Gen 2-based distro. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Like, it won't be Gen 2 itself, because we all know when that will happen. But maybe yeah. Calculator... Uh, uh, what's the other one? Starts with uh, seduction. Is that the, is that it? Um, I would I wouldn't know because I'm I'm not gonna try it. <laughs> <laughs> I I spent too much time trying real Gen two. No, pass. Even try you tried to spend too much time in Windows is what you actually meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Fedora keeps calling me back. Oh, I really like Fedora. Fedora is good. Elementary OS is not so good. Um. I don't uh, want, no. made, me think, made me think of that. Anyways, all right. So, moving on into the contact information. This should be good. I'm just saying that out loud right now because this is going to be a disaster. Is actually what it's going to be. So, if you know me, you know that I can't get the, through the contact information 
It's not worth a damn. So, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can subscribe to all of our audio stuff at thelinuxcast.org. There will be a website there next week when we record this podcast. I'm putting a deadline on it, damn it. It's so freaking close. The website is done. The server is up. All I had literally had to do is install like a, a web server on the server and upload the files. That's literally all I had to do. I just gotta, you know, do it. So I'm gonna put a deadline on it. There will be a website there next week. Anyways, you can contact us via email, email at the linuxcast.org. Um, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can support Tyler who has, uh, places on odyssey and youtube youtube.com slash zany og on youtube you can join either of our discord servers we links to those will be in the video description you can join the telegram group which if you do join the telegram group i don't know why you'd want to do that there's literally nobody there i don't know why it's there <laughs> um but it exists if you want to go there and uh shout into the ether <laughs> you can do that uh you can uh check out our merch store or Technically, Zany's merch store. That link will be also will be in the video description. There's a lot of awesome stuff there, and you can subscribe to the Linux Cast on YouTube at YouTube.com/slash the Linux Cast. That was pretty damn good. I mean, <laughs> just saying yes, that was, it was that was pretty damn good. It wasn't the disaster that I thought it was going to be. So every week, Tyler and I scour the internet for news items uh, pertaining to Linux and open source software, and this week is no different. So Tyler, what is your uh, news item this week. Mine is a fantastic one. Uh, so for any of you guys who are like like me and always were kind of into the NUX, uh, the Intel NUX, um, there's an AMD Ryzen. It's a desk mini. And um, this thing's actually pretty like solid. Um, it is comes with a uh, four core eight thread ryzen 7 uh it's an h series laptop processor so it's a pretty decent lap it's one of the better laptop processors with vega 10 and um you know you can slap uh, like i believe it's got two uh m.2 drives in it um it can fit a 2.5 inch and it comes with manjaro os plasma gamer edition Manjaro so, has a gamer edition. Since when? Uh, why not? I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't keep up with these things. Who cares, man? And I don't even know what that means. Gamer edition. They probably it means it has Steam installed. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. probably it. But who cares? <laughs> like, let's. Why not? Let's make it. If Opera makes a gaming browser, why can't the world have anything else? Oh God! It? Like. <laughs> Come on. Chat poll. If, Does if, anybody actually use Opera as their browser? If so, we're going to ban you. I'm just that kidding. doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. <laughs> the, like, we already know no one uses Opera. And if you do use Opera, it's only because you just don't know any better. That's it. Like, you've you never that, tried anything else. You have else. such a hard on for using something different that you had to go out and find the most different browser you could possibly choose because nobody well, else uses them. Why is Opera still a thing? <laughs> well, it, 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 it's for that, again, that small niche, like niche amount of people who searched for a browser and picked the one that they had never heard of before. And then that's what they stuck with for the rest of their life. Or, or there's like some really, really nerdy opera people who liked, like, you know, opera. Like the, like, oh, wait. Well, I guess opera devs probably use it. You think and so? I, I do say probably, probably. I mean, I don't know that they would, but probably. I would. <laughs> TFL says he's I mean, never used Opera. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, maybe Opera would be good if they were still using their own engine, but they just, it's just Blink. It to yeah. me, Opera. Uh, we're 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 trailing off of your yes, topic Robert. there for a minute. We'll come back to it in a minute. I just want to say this. It's like okay, so Opera's like Vivaldi before Vivaldi was Vivaldi, you know, because they have, like, uh, yeah. email clients and, and and all this stuff and VPNs and all that stuff built in. Well, <laughs> I mean, it, it's really... It, I mean, it's really like Vivaldi before Vivaldi went really bad. Like, before mm -hmm. it got really bad. All right. Seriously, I don't... I don't know. How do we, how do we even have no idea that conversation? I don't even know. All right. So this looks really cool. It's only like $500, right? Too, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And this is one of the. This is actually a, one of those rare Linux computers that you can buy here in the United States. I think, right? Uh, I believe so. Um, because like Slimbook and uh, like Tuxedo and all those stuff, those are all European based. Um, manufacturers and they don't sell over here. Like you can get them here, but it costs like two hundred dollars to ship it. No. And that's not. And, I mean, it's this thing is AMD, man. But so that like it's actually not crap. Like, yeah, you could probably play decent games on it. Like, I mean, I I don't know about the latest AAA, but you know, like you I'm, know, some yeah. Killing Floor Two or something like that. Some decent settings. Yeah, it, looks, yeah, it no looks problem. it looks awesome. It looks like it could drive d dual displays too. So, mm -hmm. um, cool. All as right. far as I know, it has an HDMI and a, a Display Port um, yeah. connector. That's cool. I wonder, does it have? It only has one USB C port though, right? That's a little, uh, yes. that's a little disappointing. Um, all right, it doesn't matter, Matt. You're gonna have to wait to buy that anyways. <laughs> you have to buy new headphones first because these things are hurting my ears. Okay. All right. So moving on to mine. Uh, my news this week is that Wine 7.0 has been released. So if you a, are a gamer of any sort, literally at all, uh, you'll know that Wine is probably the most important piece of Linux software for that kind of stuff. And this new version of Wine comes with improved high DPI to support. Support. I can't talk with the damn improved. <laughs> um, I think this is HID stack and joystick uh, support, which is, you know, good if you're using those like proprietary like joysticks and stuff that have become really popular since Microsoft Flight Simulator came out again. Uh, new WAS64 architecture support for a lot of things that I don't actually know. Better support for multiple displays with caveats. I don't know what those caveats are. Uh, various new Direct3D 10 and 11 features, plug and play driver tweaks, and updated Mono 7.0. Uh, so there's just a ton of stuff. Here apparently it's a really big release. Uh, I'm not a gamer all that much, so a lot of that stuff just zoomed right over my head. I have no clue what actually any of it means. But uh, for those gamers of you out there, supposedly this is a really really big release. Um, yeah, so this is a big deal. This like might might make gaming on Linux much more playable. Like a lot more playable. Well, that's across good. Across the spectrum. Because, because, all right, so I wanted to play a game, and I've come to realize that Arco is crap for playing games because Proton doesn't work on my install of Arco at all. I can play any Linux native game that I want in Steam, but I, the minute I try to use a Proton one, it does that whole thing where you press the play button, it does. The, the first time you press the play button, it comes up with a little pop-up and it does its normal Vulcan stuff and looking for shaders and all that stuff. And mm. then it immediately, the, the play button, which changes from green to blue, goes back to green and says play again. After that, you, you when I hit play on the play button, it goes to the stop button like it normally would. And then it automatically goes right back to play. And it does that on every single Proton game out there like every single one that i have installed it doesn't matter what you know game studio and I, i've tried different versions of proton i've tried different uh settings in steam i've tried some different flags that they've said to try on the internet it just does not work so hmm. and i don't know why like it, it really sucks because like i wanted to play some racing games damn it but it just wouldn't start <laughs> so i had to play city skylines and then i i got like to like 10,000 people in in cities in my city and the damn thing crashed. So Oh fun. Yeah. yeah. So gaming on Linux kind of shit. I'm just going to put that out there. It can still be kind of shit. Um I'm sure yeah. some I'm sure if you use a more gaming focused distro than what I'm using, maybe it's better. I don't I'm assu I'm assuming the reason why I'm having problems is because of a of a, a well, dependency Arco. or something. I've I, I've had Arco play weird with a lot of things, so could just be Arco. But I love it so much. As, as much as we love it, it's I mean, so hey, I <laughs> see the really sad part is is like I don't even use Arco, but I have a really nice Arco T-shirt that I made here. Yeah, you like, should. Everybody should go out and buy one of those things. Like it's so nice. It's made like with the Arco wallpaper. Like it's so nice. It is good. All right, so. I think 
we're moving right along. We've only been recording for 20 minutes, and we're already moving on to the main topic. What the hell is wrong with us? Oh, Obviously, so me, <laughs> me sleep deprived helped us move along faster? What? <coughs> this is crazy. Excuse me. Matt, try Minjaro. I've tried Minjaro before. Um, maybe I should... I, I think I want a distro hop, damn it. Damn it. Thank you, Carlos. All right. Now I want a distro hop. This? How about this? If you try Manjaro, I will back up all of my shit and get prepared. I'll stop working on the game for a little bit, and I will try to switch back over to Linux and continue game dev there. Tyler, why don't you dual boot? Like, seriously, you're like a prime candidate uh, Because for there's boot. no reason... No, like no, the no. whole reason I'm not using Linux is because I don't want to have to stop game dev and spend the time to like hassle and get everything to work. But I'm just saying it, that if you had two out. partitions on your hard drive, one Windows, one Linux, do your game dev and then mess around. Use Linux as like your like your mess around time. Like when you're taking a break, shut your Windows computer down and then boot back into to Linux and mess around for 15 20 minutes take yourself a, a, a brain break switch back to Windows and keep going on your game it's literally the but best of both when worlds. all of but when all of my game when, when more games work on Windows and uh, it's like instead of me rebooting my computer and then logging back into a whole different system just to go in and watch Netflix I can just press a button inside of edge well, my button being a bookmark and watch Netflix. Everyone in the I chat, everyone in the chat is hearing this right now, and what they're hearing is that you're a lost cause. You're never coming back to Linux. I just <laughs> said, if you want to install Manjaro, let's make an event out of it. And, right, but, and I'll but do you, it. you also said you're gonna have to wipe your your Windows install out, right? Yeah, well, I, I've got a 14 terabyte drive. I can back it up. My next cloud drive I'm, as well. I'm just I'm saying, if you had a dual boot every time you decided to try out a Linux distro. You wouldn't have to wipe out your your Windows install. It would just be there. Uh, no more installing Windows for you. It's just there, and it's well, working. Well, I I would do that, but I don't have an extra drive. I I literally only have this fourteen terabyte drive on this machine. I only have the fourteen terabyte drive and my NVMe in there, and dual booting on the same drive with Windows is a no go. No go. Windows does not like that. It worked fine for me. Uh, Granted, it's it, been it's and, some it's been three or four years, so sometimes it will, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get a beautiful Linux install going and then just let Windows kill it. Like, no. Nah. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. I'm pretty sure TFL's in the in the chat mocking you, I'm just saying this. <laughs> Either that or he's mocking me. <laughs> he's mocking someone. <laughs> All right. Moving on to the main topic, we'll just put I mean, I'm gonna continue to try to get I'm I, I am going to try Manjaro as my, on my main partition. So what I'm hearing is we're going to have a Discord event where we install Manjaro after this. <laughs> it will not be after this. It'll be this evening maybe, but <laughs> I'm going to have to get out of this chair. That okay, my, so throbbing. what I'm hearing is, just so everyone in this in, who's watching us live and listening to us afterwards, possibly soon enough to hear this, Matt is going to join me in my Discord server later on, and we're going to install Manjaro as a team. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> I'll have to use my phone and get Discord on there, you know. All right, we'll do this. All yep. Right. Okay. Okay. We're going to do it. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the TFL is one of those guys, was probably one of those children that have had the perfect puppy dog innocent eyes. He got away with everything. I'm sure he was. Um, me mocking? That's what, How dare you? That's what it. kills me about my, 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 my dog. He even posted a halo <laughs> emoji. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. All right. He knows. Um, um, moving on to the main topic. Can. KDE Beacon Arms. So, the reason why I wanted to talk about this was because I was listening to some other podcasts, and they were talking about, like, the history of Linux or whatever. And prior to KDE 4 coming out, KDE was kind of the predominant desktop environment. A lot of the distros out there used KDE as their main desktop environment. And then once KDE 3 came out, it was horrible, and people switched to GNOME. So... The question I had to ask was, do we ever picture a scenario in the future 
where that kind of switches back because there's been a lot of pushback over the developers and the way they're doing GNOME now. Do we see an opportunity for something like KDE to come in and be the predominant desktop environment again? Or have we become too fractured uh, and have too many desktop environments? So, Tyler, okay. answer the question. I'm, I'm going to be that beaten and whimpering dog that has been whimpering for ages. Yes, just fix the settings menu. Jesus. It's convoluted. It looks ugly as sin. Um, that's it. Just, just KDE is so close to perfect. The only thing it lacks is just not even a UI overhaul. Just go in there and move around stuff and just make it look a little bit prettier. Like just a little bit. Tweak, tweak the UI so things are just spaced out a little bit more. Just some minor tweaks. And oh my God, it would be great. But the fact that if I want to, uh, I don't know, change double, like if I click on an object in my file browser, I don't, I don't want a single press to open it up. I want a double press to open it up. The fact that I need to go into settings. So it's not in my file browser, which is cool. Okay. So it is in settings. So inside of settings, where would you think you would find it? Under mouse, under file, under file manager. No, you find it under workspace, under workspace. That makes no sense. It's Why would I find it? It's weird there. because the, the single click and double click behavior used to be in Dolphin. That used to be where it was and they moved it out. Mm -hmm. Why they moved it out, I don't know. I'm assuming they, they moved it out and then for a short period of time it was in mouse and then it moved out of there. It I swear. It's just it's just one of those things where get that settings menu figured out and KDE can excel. Okay, so, they have a great suite of applications. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever taken advantage of them. Scott in my Discord has, and he can talk about it for hours. He loves it. Kmail is fantastic. It's, it I love all of them because they allow you to tweak, and I love the tweak stuff. Uh, so I'm going to have to disagree with you about the settings things. I don't think that I, – I think that in some places you're right, that it is convoluted, and they need to do a better job of getting things to be actually where they need to be. Um, that's definitely true. But I don't think that it's ugly or anything like that. I think it's way better than it used to be. Um, and I don't think that that can even be argued. It's way better than it used to be. No. I think that their biggest hurdle actually in being mainstream and being usable is actually Discover. Because their software application center, now that is shit. And, and Discover has been crap for years. Now, don't get me wrong, it is better than it used to be. But that's not really <laughs> saying that much. They've literally... It's literally the definition of lipstick on a pig. They've gone through and made it faster and added some screenshots and stuff like that. But it's still not great looking. And the thing about a store, and this is true no matter whether you're selling anything or not, is that your storefront has to have curb appeal. Like, you don't walk into a mall and go into a place that looks like it was being run by a hobo. It has to have, you know... It has to look nice. And that's the has same to have thing. some class. Yeah. Yeah. And it just doesn't, right? It, the, the Discover just, it looks like crap. It look it looks like the 7-Eleven of software centers. Yeah. I know what you're saying. And yeah, it, yeah, it does. It exactly, <laughs> it's exactly what it does. Um, the, 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 and the thing is, is it, it, if it were the only software center in town and you had nothing to compare it to, people would probably find it perfectly fine. But if you compare it to something like GNOME software, and God, I hate saying this because uh, I hate everything that has to do with GNOME. But the GNOME Software Center, flawed as it may be, looks nice, you know. And they've gone through and continually, re you know, uh, made it better, and they've rewritten it, and it's uh, it has cool pictures and stuff like that, and. Uh, while cool <laughs> Discover has gotten the, some of the screenshot things right, when you open up Discover, the first thing you see are icons. And half of the icons look like they're from the 1990s. Because you want to know what? There's one thing that we can almost say, almost universally, is that uh, Linux software developers 
are not also graphic designers. <laughs> they can't do yeah. icons worth the damn, the vast majority of them. I'm sorry, but they can't. Um, yeah. All you have to do is look at things like... Um, Here oh. soon, just take a look at my game. No. <laughs> just, I mean, things like Gimp or Caden Live. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, their icons aren't horrible, but they're not, you know, catchy. They're not pretty. And... What the hell does a fox have to do with uh, graphic design software? I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> you know, I think yeah. is, is that a fox? I don't even know. Um, so I mean, that's. I think that's my biggest problem with KDE. No, it doesn't really answer the question though. Uh, can they take overtake GNOME? Because I think. I think the question of if they can has less to do with how good KDE is and more to do with how pissed off people are with GNOME. Um, and because people are pissed off with the developers of GNOME. So, um, I think that they have an opportunity there to get some foothold. But my worry is that we seem to be in an era less, an era, an era <laughs> less of people adopting pro technology that already exists. So, for example, moving from uh, 1D GNOME to, um, KDE, but more in an era of people just deciding, hey, screw it, I'm just going to write my own desktop environment. Uh, System76 mm -hmm. is doing this, but there's rumors that, Ubu that Canonical is going to do this with Flutter. Uh, Budgie is going through and rewriting theirs instead of, you know, and going to EFL. Uh, so I think that that's going to be more where this goes instead of KDE becoming. Because no matter what the problems we have with KDE, it's the most customizable desktop environment we have, by far. Like, yes, that comes with its own problems, but from a customizability standpoint, if you're a distro maintainer, why you wouldn't just go through and customize KDE to make it look how you want it to look for your users? Why you wouldn't do that, I don't understand. Because literally, if you wanted to look, if Ubuntu wanted to keep their standard look, they could do that with KDE. They could do it. Um, if they, if uh, um, Elementary OS wanted to create their look with KDE, they could do it. But no, they wanted to create their own stuff, and that's fine. Uh, but it just creates more and more desktop environments, and a lot of these things are just going to end up eventually abandoned for something else, or they're going to have their certain problem. They're going to get heavy and bloated and all this stuff. It's just, I mean, obviously KDE is going to have its own problems because. One of the things about KDE is that because it has so many settings, it doesn't necessarily um, lend itself to new users, right? So it kind of makes you think that KDE needs like an easy mode. I don't know. Or just really, you know, I mean, KDE could benefit a lot from um, that, that kind of n new new user friendly like a mac kind of style in the in the discover um i mean gnome kind of gets it right with the icons even though they're not like i mean they they objectively look good but they don't i mean they don't look like you've got billions of dollars and like you they've paid a team to just sit, sit back and design all of these icons but they have icons that they just look appealing immediately once you get in there they it looks like something that i don't know you're you're excited to look at every day to get new stuff and that's not discover strong suit right now it does work fine like i mean i've used discover it's fine um it used it used to not be great but on kd neon it was fantastic <laughs> but my i know that i look really pale i <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's because there's there you know when you lose some shading on the on the, on your face it just makes you look like i can turn this down um i don't know that that's any better but uh, i can I, well, in fact turn it down <laughs> the the sad part is is we can't do like all of that nice color grading and stuff like if we <laughs> could maybe okay so we're gonna about we're about to take a tangent. This this could just go down this road. All right. I have All never right. color graded anything in my life. Okay, and you probably can tell that from the videos. I, I can even, help you out there. I wouldn't even know where to start. So I'm one of those people. 
Like, I could tell a difference when we went from standard definition to high definition. Like, I could tell a difference between those two. I can't tell a big difference. My eyes just aren't good enough to tell the difference between HD and 4K. I can't. Okay? <laughs> um, the same thing, but and it has something to do with my eyes, but I can't. I mean, I can tell if colors are, like, really, really bad, but if the subtle changes that you get with color grading, I can't really tell a difference. My eyes are just that bad. But the the weird thing is it it, it translates to my ears too. <laughs> like I <laughs> uh, like so I listen to podcastage. If you don't know that he's a YouTube, he's a YouTuber who reviews microphones, and he does like these long micro microphone reviews where he compares like fifteen microphones. And the thing is, I don't know why I listen to this thing because I can't tell the difference between any of the microphones. <laughs> they all sound exactly the same to me. Like it doesn't matter if like he has like a, a microphone that costs ten thousand uh, dollars. It's made by Neumann, and the thing is, is that oftentimes he'll put that up against something that costs like a hundred bucks. I can't tell the difference. Like not even a little bit. Like they sound exactly the same to me. <laughs> and I know I know there are differences. Like now some of that is going to be because uh you know my audio setup is not like I don't have these are thirty dollar microphone uh, headphones, right? <laughs> you know, so yeah, that's part gonna be part of the reason. But also I've never been an audiophile, so um that's just the thing. And it's the same thing with color grading and stuff like that. I just can't tell the difference. Um so if you're expecting my video quality to get any better anytime soon, it's probably, probably well, not. Happen. When we meet up later to install Mancharo, I will shoot you over the folder that I have of LUTs that I that I've talked to you about uh, sending over, and you can apply those pretty easily in OBS. And if you can't tell a difference with those, then you really do need to go get checked out because you're probably colorblind. <laughs> I'm, I'm colorblind. The, the, th- the thing is, is that I can tell a difference. So, like, I like DistroTube a lot. Like, he, I would not be where I am without him. Uh, but the thing is, is he recently started changing his color grading on his his videos to look a lot darker. And, like, I could tell that. It looks like he turned all his lights off. There's And there was one there where he looked like an Oompa Loompa. I'm, I'm just going to put that out there. He, he his, his skin was orange. Um, so, <laughs> I could... T- like, it, it's when you get to that point where you went really far off the, the, the normality scale that I can tell. But when there, it's the subtle stuff, I can't tell. So, um... Yeah. <laughs> I can't there was one there where he just it just didn't turn out all that great for him. Uh and I I, I don't know about you, Tyler, but I wouldn't look very good as an Oompa Loompa. I'm just <laughs> No. This. No. And neither would I. <laughs> yeah. I, I. I couldn't pull it off. Uh, th- there are probably younger members of our audience who saying, What the hell is an Oompa Loompa? <laughs> oh, please no. <laughs> look, look. I, 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 I know some of y'all might Consider yourselves old. I don't consider myself old. Myself old. Oh my god. Uh, no, no, the, no. Here's the sad. <laughs> here's the sad the part is that people, people probably of your generation and a little bit later, probably think that um, Johnny Depp was Willy Wonka. Like. That's technically true, but it's Gene Wilder, people. But, yeah. <laughs> the good one. The, the, the good one. I the weird pedophile one weird. yeah the weird one <laughs> like, I mean, like you could tell that one was done by I, I, who was his name tim burton was that the guy who did that redid that um i don't know i i mean see the thing is is like when when you see the comparison between the two like one's like oh this is definitely for kids the other one's like why is this guy who's clearly doing cocaine hanging out with kids like what's <laughs> like, like, going this on this guy's definitely a pedophile i'm just saying like <laughs> hey, he should not be near, near children uh, then don't get me wrong giant depth i'm sure is a great i mean seriously the first pirates of the caribbean probably one of the best disney movies i've ever seen oh, he's a great actor but that doesn't mean that he fit that role at all all like that was <laughs> no no, no. He, he def- that's definitely not one <laughs> yeah, it's really weird right and, 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 i don't know how how a linux conversation has ended up with us talking about johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, here, here's here's the progression we went from color grading to distro tube looking like an oompa loompa to johnny Depp. i'm just saying this is the best tri- <laughs> it's like it's like it's a it's a linear progression <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that's probably true, but because uh, Roald Dahl was was a weird, weird author too. So his his uh, I'm I'm responding to Milo in the in the chat who said that Tim Burton stuff was it was closer to the actual books, but still, Charlie Depp's not okay. Anyways, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> At least we can agree on that much. I, I, no. I don't know what's gone wrong with this podcast, but I warned you. I warned you at the beginning. I warned you at the beginning. Hey, and we were so be fast at the beginning that we have to make up for it with some good tangents, okay? Hey, it's only 40 minutes in. We can't stop at 40 minutes. Exactly. Uh, and, and especially because we need to take up more time. That way people aren't, you know... I don't. I don't have a flood of people in my Discord just waiting for you to show up because I know that's what's going to happen. I'm going to gain. My server is going to gain like 40 people just to wait to show like for you to show up so that we can d- do a Linux install as a group. <laughs> like, okay, so that's not. Gonna, it, it'll be at least eight o'clock. I'm just saying that right now. Okay, my that's time. Fine. I, 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 uh, and I gotta take a break. At, usually after the podcast, I have to take away a break from the computer. Also, I have to at least sometimes when I edit this podcast. So I'm just pointing that out. So that's that's true. Um, it, it but can, but I now I now might just might be in the habit of getting you the audio before you get up from the computer. All right, that's I, 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 I want to put the brakes. On this habit idea, because one week of actually doing this does not form a habit. I'm <laughs> it can. It can. It's the start of a habit. It's not the actual habit. How do you think this one started? Just <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> so what we need to try to what we need to do is make sure that there's some kind of reward after you sending me the audio, and then you'll you'll get that positive reinforcement right okay uh, there is I, it's the satisfaction of knowing that three hours later i won't get a, an, an awkward message of hey man can i please get that audio <laughs> and then i progressively get angrier and angrier <laughs> you okay. like hey man i need to work <laughs> Like, like, I need to do this sometime before 3 o'clock in the morning, Tyler, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see if you can do it two weeks in a row. Then we might start talking about the whole habit thing. It's all right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> good Lord. Um, we had a we had an episode right before uh, we break. We we uh, stopped for the, the Christmas break where we talked about nothing. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is actually turned in. Like, we got away from the main topic. Um but KDE and Gnome, yeah, uh, I think I think KDE can come ahead, but they'll just need... I still think the settings is kind of something that it definitely needs to be addressed. Like, just, I don't know, making it a little bit more competitive and a little bit more user-friendly uh, would be nice. But, yeah, Discover still... I hadn't even thought about Discover until you brought it up. I mean, that's that's a really good point. Like, it definitely definitely could use improving. Well, I I think the big the biggest. I mean, we we talk. I think Discover is the biggest one because I mean, the vast majority of people, excuse me, are, are new users who come into a desktop environment and never used it before. And the number one place that they're going to visit outside of a browser is going to be the store where they buy their application, uh, buy their applications, but get their applications. And if it, that, if that doesn't, hey, now we're not, we're not elementary OS. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, Distinguish. Uh, whatever. The, the, the thing is, <laughs> if it doesn't look good, right. And people aren't going to go with it. There's also the problem of KD having really weird defaults in a lot of their applications. So like K mail, as it comes out of the box, almost completely unusable. It's just not a good experience. And, uh, and that's the way with a lot of the KDE applications is that their defaults just aren't that great. You can make them fantastic. Like, you can make Kmail into literally anything oh. you want in terms of, like, uh, organizations, to do uh, not to do but to-dos, uh, calendars, all that stuff. And you can organize it and make the UI hook however you want and create a workflow and uh, do a ton of stuff. But that all requires a lot of effort and a lot of knowledge of how to do it. And you got to know that that stuff is there. And so better defaults for their applications would see them uh, like miles ahead of where they are now. Because their defaults right now are for a lot of the times not very good at all. 
Um, so, and the one thing you can say about GNOME is that their default applications are stupidly simple. Like seriously, mm-hmm. every single GNOME application does its job. And yeah. uh, like, like I said, say what you will about GNOME and all the features that they've taken out and the lack of customization and all that stuff. But if you go into their calendar application, it's a fucking calendar application. It does the things that the calendar application needs to do and no more. And while, yeah, you can't customize it at all, at least it does that job, you know? Yeah. Um, God, it just, serves the function perfectly. That's it. I just spent, like, at least a minute there praising GNOME. I need to... I, I need a bucket. Hold something. on, hold on. <laughs> Is this Matt's podcast? <laughs> like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm a pod sure. person now. I'm just saying. <laughs> Good lord. Um, I gotta rotate my headphones here because my ear's falling asleep. And that is a weird, weird, weird sensation when your ear falls asleep. I'm just saying. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> Apparently it is. Um, anyway, so that's the thing about this whole comparison thing is that when you use GNOME as a new user, you have at least a really good chance of being able to use everything that they send you. Now, once you've progressed past that point and want to do customizations, that's where GNOME fails, that falls down. With KDE, it's the opposite thing. Their, their built-in applications aren't the most user-friendly. Their, the system settings aren't user-friendly at all. If you can get past that and get to the point where you actually want to use those settings, uh, you you at least have that opportunity to do so where you wouldn't have that opportunity on GNOME. So um, I think the biggest problem is for this whole idea of KDE taking over is that their defaults aren't great. And it would require and a tremendous amount of work on the part of distros to make those defaults better. So like if, if Ubuntu wanted to go through and use KDE as their default. Now they're going to ditch GNOME. They'd have to go through and make sure every single application was new user friendly because the vast majority of people come to Ubuntu probably are new or newish users. And if those defaults aren't good, they're not new user friendly, then oh, good Lord, then their um, ability to use that desktop environment slash distro is just going to be non-existent. Oh. Wow, that we, we <laughs> it was a roller coaster, man. We went, <laughs> we started off with the main topic, and then we went into Oompa Loompa Land, and we came back <laughs> out to the main topic. It was pretty good. All right, uh, let's just wrap this up. This is this, this has been. <laughs> There's nothing like a good roller coaster of a podcast. Come guess, on now. Seriously, I'm gonna take those off now. I can't see anything, but that's okay. I can't see anything with a mom. Um. <laughs> all right, now. Every week, we go through and have picks, tips, tricks, something of the week. We don't know what to call it. Uh, it's because we're not talented or creative enough to come up with an actual name for ourselves. That's just it's so true. I mean, it's just the most true thing I've ever spoken. Uh, and this week is no different. So, Tyler, what is your pick of the week? I'm sure. Uh, my pick of the week is something I'm definitely going to get bullied for a uh, 100%. Um, now, as far as I know, this is only works on like Windows and may work on Mac. I have no idea. Um, I'm 99% sure it does not work on uh, Linux because I'm pretty sure the version that I downloaded was probably built for Windows XP. Um, it looked old as dog poop. But this is a program that like it's kind of um, it. It's a GUI application for designing and modeling trees without actually having to model you like it gives you a whole bunch of different sliders and variables to affect and like procedurally generate uh, like pr- uh, tree branches and you can make those into trunks make more branches off of them and then add uh, leaves to that and then um, it does all of the complex thing like vertex painting and all of this stuff to make a model that you could use in a game engine and it's primarily used for Unreal. As far as I know, it can be used in others, but that's what it's made for. Um, it's a really nice, really cool tool. I had a lot of fun playing around with it. I'm not using it for my game, but um, just in case anyone else is like 
into that kind of stuff or you're like, that sounds like something that would be fun to play around with. Um, it looks like a virus, but it's actually a really cool tool. <laughs> and I haven't used windows in a long time, but windows looks like a virus. So I'm just yeah, going <laughs> just gonna put that out there. All right. Um, that does sound cool, but obviously not anything that I'd be interested in seeing as how it doesn't run on Linux. Also, because I'm not a game developer, like at all. Like zero. I mean, is, is, yes. there, is there such a thing as a negative game? In, uh, like, 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 I'm pretty sure if you let me near your game, I'd probably take away from it. <laughs> and probably, I don't know. I'd probably give it a virus or something. <laughs> All right. Good lord. Uh, I, you're the one that's sleep deprived. Yeah, I'm the one acting like it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, I'm surprised that I am even still awake. I was really, really nervous that I was going to fall asleep at like nine o'clock in the morning and then fall asleep like a rock and then just sleep, like sleep until like 15 minutes before the podcast, wake up just scared. Like, oh God. More like sleep until 15 minutes after the podcast. Oh shit, man. I'm sorry. That too. That too. (laughs) That's probably more likely. That's happened before. I'm just saying. All right. Uh, (laughs) That's the thing is I hold grudges, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> so you know that like I'll never let you live anything down. And, all right, so and Matt, just so you know, I don't. All right, us missing yesterday. I'm fine with a man. You deserve it. All right. You knew ahead of time. Like, like I, that's the reason why I asked. Um, I'll, there's gonna be some days like that, just that where I just think, like, I'm sorry, Tyler. I, I've been busy all day long. I don't want to talk to you. Okay. <laughs> and look, I, and, and I'm just, this, I'm just, this is, this is not I'm a just reminding you. I'm just reminding you. I don't hold grudges, man. Like, like, it's it, fine. When I tell you I don't want to talk to you, it's not really a you problem. It's more like I don't want to talk to anybody. Like so, like I've had enough of people. That's what today. they all say. That's what they all say. <laughs> it's really, really not a personal <laughs> thing. It's just I don't want to talk to anybody because I've, I've had enough of people for the day. And if I talk to one more person, I'm going to commit homicide all right well a day full of dealing with a whole bunch of people at some point you just want to tap out like, just, no. people man who needs them <laughs> okay <laughs> there's a reason why a cabin in the woods sounds really appropriate sometimes you know like really appealing uh there <laughs> tyler's gonna go out on his wagon i'll be out in the middle of the wood in the middle of the woods uh, the only problem is there's no fucking internet out there and that's the biggest problem that's uh, the problem uh, if there's internet I'd, I'd be good anyway so my app of the week is called q prompt now for the most part, this is a useless lap for most people. Most people don't need a teleprompter. I'm just going to put that out there. No. Um, but I've decided that I'm going to go through and actually start a new YouTube channel for my history stuff. And see if I can make a go of that. And if I can do that, then I don't have to work a main job. But we'll, that's a, a pipe dream at the moment. But the thing is, is that if I'm going to create a history channel, I can't be as... How do I put this nicely? Off the cuff, as my Linux channel has turned out to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I needed a cue. I needed a teleprompter of something so that I could. You know, I don't have to just you know read a uh, uh, like a block of text and something that actually acted like a teleprompter. So QPrompt is that application. It's fairly new. And it has a ton of settings, like ton, uh, just an absolute ton of settings. There's a ton of customization you can do. Uh, it's kind of like a KDE app, KDE app in that way uh, mm-hmm. that you can go through and just change a ton of different stuff about it. And it's a really good. It's native. I don't think it's written in Electron, but I could be wrong about that. But it's still, uh, it's still really, really good. And um, yeah, if you are the type of person who does need a teleprompter and you're gonna start scripting stuff, QPrompt is probably something you should check out. Uh, now, somebody asked me if I was going to start scripting for the Linux cast, the, the channel, the Linux channel. I was like, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, I think I've cultivated a reputation where bullshitting has kind of gotten me through. And I think mm-hmm. that I will keep that reputation going on forward. Uh, although I do believe that I've gotten a little bit better, a little more well-spoken in the year and a half or so that I've been doing this. Uh, there's not so many ums as there used to be. Like I, I went through and watched one of my first videos the other day, and wow, why would you do that? So when I first when I first started doing actual videos, like to begin with, it was just the podcast, right? And mm-hmm. then I decided I was going to do Linux videos. When I first started doing those, I didn't even edit the damn things. Like I literally recorded them and posted them. 
That was awesome. all there was. There was no editing whatsoever on there. So every um, ah, and <laughs> and and you know, and fart all recorded. everything was there like i didn't even have any of them uh and you could tell <laughs> like you can really freaking tell it's really bad like, uh, and the thing is like one of those has like ten thousand views <laughs> like like people people have watched that zim wiki view video which i'm pretty sure was my very first video like a lot of times and <laughs> like I'm so I'm so embarrassed that that's, that's actually man. Like I think that's and the thing is at that point I wasn't even appearing on camera. Like I was I was a little gun shy oh. on the whole camera thing for a while. Oh, I um, wish I'm so jealous. Mine's a Q tile video. It's so bad, and my video my face is in it, and <laughs> it's so bad. So I I have an uh, I have a how to customize i three video. It's my most most viewed video. It has over thirty thousand views. And it's one of my earlier videos, so it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not the it's not as bad as the first video. It's like you could see some progression. Like it was a little bit better. It was definitely edited, uh, and there was my fa my face was in it. But it still compared to the things that I do now, which still aren't all that great. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's it was definitely not uh, a great. And the thing is, like it's my most viewed video. Like, and the thing is, so I was like, I was thinking. I want to redo this video, but if I redo it, will that one then stop getting views? I mean, that thing sometimes holds my views some days with the number of views that it gets. Like, I don't really want to go through and, and kneecap the damn thing and then <laughs> ruin ruin it. Because what if the new the new video doesn't do it well? But I'm eventually going to redo it because I'm going to have to. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, TFL, I like, so... <laughs> um, anyways, that is, uh... Good lord. We did make it to an hour, by the way, by bullshitting <laughs> through. The, oh. yeah. anyway, like we we bullshitted at least half the time. All right. Anyways, why why did you get a Boca effect? Now I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone in chat said I'm definitely running Windows, and I was like, I, I was just going to turn this on and be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know running Windows. <laughs> uh, uh, Carlos has asked a couple times, "Where's Buddy?" Oh, um, <clears throat> give me one second. Um, let me turn off the background effect and uh, switch over my webcam. There's, There's Buddy. Buddy Hi, Buddy. For those of you watching the buddy. video, Buddy has now appeared on camera. He put his ears up. <laughs> <laughs> like he knows. He knows. All right. Buddy, they're saying hi. There's Buddy. All right. So that is it for this week. Uh, coming up next week. We're going to be talking about, let's just see here. We're going to be talking about, I have no clue what we're going to be talking about next week. We're, we're going to talk about something. Uh, we, I have several options here. I don't know what they're going to be yet. But anyway, this, I think it's technically it's Tyler's turn next week. So we should be talking about, should Linux uh, lay with the devil NVIDIA? We'll probably come up with a better title for that. I'm just, probably. we don't want to invite the devil sleep work. deprived me coming up with an amazing title would be really surprising you remember the punctuation i'm just very impressed uh, I, again so <laughs> am i and, and, and then git was like we we can't have punctuation because <laughs> in linux you can't use a question mark in a top in a file format it just saying it. apparently you can use file you can use question marks in windows in in mm -hmm. file names uh, yeah. you can't you can't do that on linux i'm just saying uh, well i i think you I don't think you can do it in file names. I think you can do it in folders. It's weird like that. It's it's something like that. Yeah, all right. It doesn't matter. You just stop using Windows yeah, completely. No. I'm just saying. All right. Well, I was just I was just in the online ID and I was typing out a sentence, so my brain like sleep deprived was just like you gotta punctuate. <laughs> <laughs> there's like a, there's a comma and there's a question mark there. You can't do that online. Anyway, so that is it for this time. If you uh you want to support us on Patreon, patreoncom slash linuxcast. Uh, Tyler also has a Patreon uh, thing. Uh, patreon.com aka Zany, is that it? I believe so. Yes. Okay. If if you can't find it, there's always my YouTube channel uh, with the about section. You can find the links there as well as the discord where you will be able to come over there. As always, I'm always hanging out in general talk. Please feel free to come by and join and wait for Matt to join us. <laughs> All this pressure, man. I don't know if I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I like it or not. I don't like pressure. Oh, pressure. There's no pressure. We're just gonna have a good time and hopefully, uh, 
successfully install Manjaro and have a good time. Before I get out of this chair, I will back up my computer so that it does that while I'm away. And I will go through and actually download Manjaro. That way I have it installed. And then I can just do do a DD onto a, a key here. And we'll do it. Like we'll do this. See, I'm, I'm going to roll baller style and I'm just... I'm just gonna load the ISO on a Ventoy drive. Uh, Ventoy doesn't it work better work. for me. <laughs> Ventoy works for me for everything but elementary OS. And all right, anyways, it, uh, it's not elementary before OS. Before we go, I should t- t- take a moment to thank my current patrons: today, Devon, East Coast Web, Patrick Gell, Primus, Marcus Minglin, Jackson Ape Tools, Steve A, Cybergate Linux, Garrick Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Day, Jeremy, Sean Odin, Martin E, which is a brand new uh, member on YouTube. A welcome, friend. Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Bandit Six. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody for your support. We will be back back next week with an Nvidia show, which we'll be talking about Nvidia. I'm gonna be Linus Torvalds and fuck you, Nvidia. <laughs> and that's, that's we're gonna that's gonna be the whole thing. Uh, Cause I've never had a good experience with Nvidia on Linux. Just never have. Anyway, so that is a good preview for that week. For next week, we will see you then. Boy.